Now here I have a Western Cell. It's uh, the Epley brand, which is probably the most well known. And it's a cell like this, provides a voltage, but unlike this, it doesn't provide any power. This one of these can, when it's fresh, can deliver you know two, even three amps. Whereas this guy will be damaged if you draw even a tenth of a milliamp for more than a few minutes. So it's not intended to provide power, it's meant to provide a reference voltage. Now this is like nominally one and a half, but the voltage will be all over the shower that flattens. This is supposed to keep 1.018 volts and the difference, the extra is temperature dependent. So you can calculate exactly what it should be if you know the temperature. And I've got a temperature sensor there going to this Arduino and down to that PC. So there's the time, ambient temperature and the temperature from the sensor underneath the cell. And that looks to be the difference in temperature, which seems to be pretty constant, just over three degrees. Uh, and then I'm manually entering that here, along with the voltages on three meters, and then logging it. And I'm just doing that at random times whenever I, I feel like it. I'm about to make a GPIB interface for these meters so that I can set things up like this to log much more consistently. But anyway, there's the three meters. HP 3455 and two 3456s. Now these guys are in the one volt range and in that range it can they've got an input impedance of 10 gig ohms or greater so they're not loading down this cell at all. If you put an ordinary multimeter on there 10 meg that would draw perhaps too much current so even though I could really run this thing continuously into these because this would only be drawing about um, 200 odd pico amps yeah much much less than a nano amp but so what I do is every now and then when I feel like it I've just got the positive sitting in that just so it doesn't short out anywhere and then plug it in here and that one's come up 1.018 these have got a slightly longer cycle, number of power line cycles. And I let that settle down after a little while and then enter the figures down there. Now I'm, I'm going to uh, stop logging this thing now because I need these meters for the previous video. Funny how time works, isn't it? <laughs> now, these guys can take, whoops, you can see a bit underneath there, it's falling out. There's a cell falling out. I don't want to disturb too much. You, you've got to keep them vertical as much as possible. These can cope with being on their side or upside down. There's another sort. These are, these are unsaturated Western cells. Saturated Western cells cannot be turned upside down. They'll be ruined immediately. They're more for... Uh, fixed laboratory standard use. As you can see, the serial number on this is uh, 100 and something thousand, and they were made up to at least, or well, up to, to around about 800,000. Uh, so this is a very early one. It was probably made in about 1960s, and they're only good for five or ten years apparently. So this is well past its use by date. Even though it's still producing 1.018 volts, the last three digits wobble around quite a bit with temperature, and the temperature is only moving three or four degrees Celsius, so it's quite sensitive to temperature. And there is a formula where if you plug in the temperature, you'll, it'll come up with a, an expected cell voltage, and then I'm comparing that with the voltages that I'm measuring and coming up with these errors. I've got to check that formula, that's a bit high maybe, but I'll try and graph this stuff. But yeah, it, it, it's just for fun, it's not really a reference anymore, but it's good that it does a 1.018 at least. 
uh, I, I got this thing a few weeks ago. Only cost fourteen dollars plus two hours of driving and heavy heavy traffic, <laughs> and that was a Sunday. But yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I got it. Always wanted to play one of these. Now, inside it's got an eight-shaped glass tube with uh, platinum wires coming in from the bottom, and then mercury and cadmium and sulfuric acid. Cadmium and mercury, two of my favourite toxic heavy metals. Much sexier than lead, but not as yummy as thallium. That's really nasty. And for that reason they've uh, fallen out of favour and there are much better sources of voltage references these days using semiconductors. So, But for a long time these were how national standards laboratories kept their definition of what a volt was. Hope you found that interesting. I might put in some graphs or I might not. In any case, catch you later.